Hello, everyone. Welcome to my video. Today I'll be introducing to you my reading every book on my bookshelf challenge. I know, exciting. So if you're anything like me, you have 5 million books on your bookshelf that you don't read. You just collect over the ages. And so I, since I've been getting back into reading and um, I'm really trying to find my footing, I really thought, hey, why not just try to read everything that you own and then decide what you like from there. So there's a couple reasons why um, I'm doing this challenge. I fell out of reading during college, um, like a lot of people, because I was so busy studying, doing all the reading I had to do for my degree. Um, and then I started teaching, which is really awesome. It's a great career, but it is a lot the first couple of years. Like, I'm not gonna lie, it's super stressful. Um, I was spending all my free time reading educational resources and um, I didn't really find a lot of time to get the joy of reading, which is a little disappointing considering I'm an English teacher. Since I finally feel like I've been, you know, the feet, the grounds underneath me, my feet are on the ground with my career, I've been really trying to get back into reading this past year and um, I've had some mixed results. I feel like I don't really know what I like to read anymore. I don't really know what my genre is. A lot of the things that I used to love when I was a kid don't quite do it for me anymore. And a lot of the things that I would have never thought I liked, um, I now love. So I really wanted to do this challenge and read every single unread book on my bookshelf um, to help me kind of figure out what books I want to keep, what books I want to get rid of, and kind of rediscover my taste, to rediscover some passion that I may have um, for a genre or an author that I didn't even know I had. Definitely, if you guys see any of these books and you think of other recommendations based on these books or based on what I do or don't like, please leave them in the comments below because I would love to read your recommendations. Let's just jump in to the challenge. So without further ado, let's talk about some of my rules for reading. I um, decided to focus because if I picked every single book that I had on my bookshelf that I had not read in its entirety, I would have a lot more than this because um, I have a lot of like resource books or language, foreign language books or certain nonfiction books. I just don't want to read all of them right now. <laughs> so I decided to focus mainly on fiction. So that was kind of a rule for myself. I did include a few nonfiction books that I thought were like it would interest me or were kind of told in a narrative style um, or were like particularly timely. Every single piece of fiction that I have on my bookshelf is on here. So that is exciting. I didn't set a time limit for myself because I don't want this to be stressful. I want this to be like organically integrated with the other books I'm reading. So I don't want it to be overwhelming where I'm just reading books on my bookshelf because I just know myself and I feel like I'm gonna get really resentful of the challenge if I make myself only read books on my bookshelf. I'm kind of limiting it to like three a month-ish. If I wanna do more, that's great. I also have another caveat for myself, which is if I get 30% of the way through a book and I am hating it, I can abandon it. But at that point, if I do abandon it, I'm just gonna give it away. So it won't like be part of my bookshelf anymore. The other thing I wanted to say is that another reason for this challenge is that um, I've moved a lot in the past couple years. I've lived in several different states that are not close to each other. And I have taken these books with me every single time. Um, I always get rid of a lot of books, but these books for whatever reason have like stayed with me. Um, and so I really wanna read them because a lot of them were gifts. A lot of them are books that I thought, oh, I'll probably read one day. Um, and so I don't think it's gonna happen unless I force myself to. There were 33 books and I'm gonna be popping in images of the books um, as I'm talking. So there are 33 books overall. 13 of those books were gifts that were given to me and um, the rest were books I either just kind of got for free somewhere or I bought or whatever. And then for the genre breakdown, there are four YA books. There's two Spanish language books four nonfiction books that I chose um, out of my shelf to read in addition, 
one poem collection, 11 classics or modern classics, seven fantasy novels, three general literary fiction, and one comedy book. We could have placed these in a couple different categories. After I already took the pictures and looked at them, I kind of thought like, for example, the Wind Up Bird Chronicle probably belonged in general literary fiction instead of fantasy. And the same goes for Circe. It could be just general literary fiction, but they were in the fantasy sections. It's fine. The longest book is definitely the Lord of the Rings trilogy, which I received in college when I was taking a really cool student-led class. Um, I actually got a credit for it about um, like all of the history of the Lord of the Rings and the Silmarillion and everything. And that's why I have this whole collection, but I've never actually read it. The shortest book is this poetry collection. The poetry collection has 131 pages. Whereas the Lord of the Rings trilogy has 1,031 pages. So that's very interesting. The book I'm most looking forward to reading is Circe by Madeline Miller. I'm actually like a third of the way through. What page am I on? I'm on page 118 chapter 10. It's great. I'm loving it. It's as awesome as I thought it was and I'll talk about that more in a minute. The book I'm least looking forward to reading, to be honest, it's probably Walden by Henry David Thoreau. Just because like, I don't know, like I really like the idea of this book and it's been quoted so much and I don't know, like I just like, I've always liked nature. I've always been interested in nature. Um, but I've also heard like, I don't know, I've heard weird, like some criticisms of this. Like he didn't really live in the wilderness and like some of it is just kind of like overdone. So I don't know. I'm excited to read it, but I do think this is gonna be, this could potentially let me down and that makes me sad. For July, I picked my three books and then kind of a fourth alternate in case I get done early and I wanna read more. And those three books are Aristotle and Dante discover the secrets of the universe. I actually finished this book. So I will talk about my thoughts about that. Circe by Madeline Miller. Oh, I'll probably be done with this by the end of the week. And Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut. The reason why I chose this book to kickstart my reading journey was because I knew it was really fast paced. I knew I could read it in like a day or two and just get a good start and a good rhythm to the challenge. Um, I also was pretty sure I was going to like this book a lot just from um, reading the back cover and um, I don't know, just like it just seemed like I would like it. So some thoughts about this book. I gave this a four star rating um, out of five. I thought this book was really, really good. It was a strong book. However, my one, the one reason why it wasn't a five star for me personally was just that I think that the writing style was a little too simplistic for me personally. Um, I think it's a great young adult book. I think if I were a teenager reading this now, I would have been totally in love with it. Just that for my own ex reading experience and my own preferences, it wasn't a five star for me. But that being said, I loved the content of it. I loved how it explored um, the like themes that were in the novel. I loved how they portrayed such like an amazing friendship between Aristotle and Dante like before things really turned explicitly romantic. One thing about this book is that it reminded me of Sherman Alexie's writing a lot. It reminded me of um, his writing because it's super intense and emotional but it's like also really impactful and kind of like concise and so I found that writing to be very similar. Um, the one thing I will say about this is that these books that this book was like significantly I guess you would say like cleaner than Sherman Alexie's books um, since there was really not much that happened in this book that would be objectionable really. Um, there's like some pretty intense stuff that happens to the main characters but I wouldn't describe it as quite as subversive as some of Sherman Alexie's novels are taken to be. 
Um, love those books too. Highly recommend. I'm just saying if you are um, considering reading this with your child or with your students, like be aware there's a few themes that are a little um, graphic, but overall I would say that this is a really awesome book. And then my second book, that was upside down. So far I'm living for this book. It's so good. Um, last year I read a, The Song of Achilles and that was amazing. It changed my life. I loved it. It was so good. Yeah, I just love that book. So I knew that when she got this book came out, I had to get it like right away. And so I told my boyfriend that I wanted it and he gave it to me as a gift when, right when it first came out. Um, I remember like literally it was on pre-order and then we had to go get it like the day that they, it came out. And it's out of my bookshelf for a year. Like, I don't know what to say. <laughs> like, so now I am reading it and I'm loving it. Like, I think it's so good. It's honestly better to me than Song of Achilles so far. Just in the fact that like, I've read it and there's been literally no parts that I found like slightly boring or dull at all. Like there were a few times reading Song of Achilles where I was like, mm, this is like a little slow, uh, especially in like the first half. But this book, none of that. Like it's, to me, it was just like completely engaging. I was sucked in from the very beginning. It's super interesting um, and I love it. So highly recommend. If you guys know any other books like this, please recommend them to me because I will read them. And then the third book I'm reading is Slaughterhouse-Five by Kurt Vonnegut. And the reason why I chose this book is, well, first of all, I have two Kurt Vonnegut books on the shelf. I have Breakfast of Champions and Slaughterhouse-Five, which neither of which I've read completely. I've read part of Breakfast of Champions. I chose this book because I really like the one book I have read by Kurt Vonnegut. I read uh, Mother Night and I had so many emotions reading that book. I feel like I hated it for like two thirds of the book. And then by the end I was like, crying for some reason it was just like really emotional and like super good i highly highly anticipate that i'm going to like this book just because i do like kurt vonnegut's style um i really like the book that i read before and this is like one of his masterpieces so um i'm definitely looking forward to that if i get done early which i anticipate i will because it's only like july 7th right now and i'm already halfway almost done with my challenge for the month. I am probably going to read This Is How You Lose Her by Juno Diaz. I feel, okay, I don't know how to say this. I'm kind of nervous right now. So just as a forewarning, obviously these are just my opinions and this is just my impression that I got reading this like a year or two or three ago. So take everything I'm saying with a grain of salt. I'm giving this book a second chance. So I'm not saying this is my final opinion on it. But the thing that kind of makes me nervous about this book is just that the first time I read it and the second time, the stories were like a little misogynistic to me. And I know that that's the point. And I like, I've actually heard Jenna Diaz speak before. I met him once. Um, I know that like these books, like part of the, the message is to show like the misogyny that some men have at the same time, like, reading this book made me uncomfortable in a way that reading The Brief and Wondrous Life of Oscar Wow did not. I love that book. I found it amazing. As soon as I read it, I was completely like sold on Juno Diaz. I loved how it used um, like Dominican words and Spanish words. I loved how I believe it even used like spellings that reflected like a Dominican accent, like leaving out the D. Um, like on an en the ending of certain Spanish words. The plot was super like interesting and complex and like intergenerational family stuff. And it was so cool. Um, and then I started reading this one. It's like people not being good to their girlfriends basically. And I was just like, I mean, yeah, I guess that like literally is the plot of this. I don't know. It just, I just didn't connect to it. Ooh, yikes. This kind of is uncomfortable <laughs> when I was reading it. So. I'm giving it another chance. I do think I can get through this book quickly because I do like his writing style. I find it very approachable. And um, I like just like the mixture of kind of literary speak and then like regular like language that anybody would use in real life. Um, I really like the way that he mixes those two things. So I think I can get through this book. I just don't know how much I'm gonna like it just because like I said when I read it it did make me feel a little uncomfortable and I don't know I couldn't really relate but maybe by the end of the book I 
we'll be able to like connect with it more. So those are my picks for July. I'm gonna update you guys as I read. Probably at the end of this month, I'll wrap up and give you my final thoughts about the books I ended up reading. If you see any books that you think sound really cool, um, that you think I might like based on what I've shared in this video, feel free to drop them in the comments or message me. I would love to hear what you have to say. And thanks so much for tuning in and I'll see you guys later. Bye.